All right, guys, it's me, the most woke. Don't need to say the whole entire title, because I know you guys know it like the back of your heart. I know you have it tattooed on your back. I know you know I have a great six-pack. We don't need to talk about it. Let's move on to things that we might not know, which is why the title of this video says something like, I'm quitting crypto. I haven't thought of the clickbait title to give this video yet to get you to watch it, but this is mostly actually pretty much true. Look, guys, I'm coming to you not in the hoodie and glasses of the ultimate, the most woke, the emptiest house but from the peaceful poncho to talk about, look, it's time for me to sit back and say, it's time for me to take the channel another direction. Look, I've been looking at crypto. I've been looking at DeFi and looking at all the things Cardano and Bitcoin and Ethereum uh, and really good projects like SafeMoon and Million are doing. And it's come to me that I have no interest in this whatsoever because there's something else going on in crypto right now that I believe is going to be the easiest thousand, five thousand X. If, if you don't get my, my take, it's, it's gonna be a very high investment that there's no point to even focus on anything else in crypto. And so I wanted to make this video to do two things. One, tell you, I'm not really gonna be focusing on or investing in anything in crypto outside of crypto gaming going forward. I'm not really gonna be covering anything on this channel outside of crypto gaming going forward. And the reason for that is because there's no reason to look at anything else in crypto. This right now and what's going on in crypto gaming and what's about to happen is the equivalent to a $50 Bitcoin. And I'm gonna show you exactly why in this video. I'm gonna break down just a simple situation uh, and talk about the places they're going to explode. On top of that, if you guys have already been following me on Twitter, I've already pointed out a bunch of products very subtly that have just... You should follow me at CSS Becker because there's so many things that are popping up and I'm just watching them. It's just like, there's no reason to be looking at anything else in crypto. And before I lay this case out to you, the main reason I wanna do this is because frankly, one of the reasons why I stopped making videos in the bear market is one, let's face it, it's not that much fun making crypto videos when everything's going down. But two, I really don't have any natural interest in the future of banking or how we spend our money. Whatever is the money, it's, it's going to be the money and the banks will do their own thing. And the centralized finance is cool, it's great. All right, it's wonderful. But to me, it's not only boring, it's speculative and full of so much overhyped bullshit that when we warp this all together, combined with my lack of interest and lack of understanding of how deep finance works, it's just like, I don't, I don't, I'm not really that into this anymore. But on the flip side, when I look at games, when I look particularly at indie games and I look at NFTs, these things all get me super excited, the art, the development behind it, the coding, the teams, the management of the companies. This is not only something that, this is something I can focus on and want to invest in bear or bull. And, and frankly, I'm very comfortable investing in crypto gaming bull or bear because it doesn't matter. This is going to happen. The end. This is not like Ethereum. This is not like Bitcoin where the world can get by without them. Am I saying that DeFi or storing value in digital currency is it going to happen absolutely not okay, absolutely not but the world can get by just fine w right now without bitcoin we, we have no problem storing our value in things other countries do i know just just bear with me before you chime in with the moon boy arguments okay just, just listen the world can get by right now and, and make financial obligations and contracts without ethereum you can go down the whole list of everything that's going on okay in gaming right now what I'm about to lay out to you, the world can't do. It's a zero to one situation. If you've ever read Peter Thiel's book, uh, Zero to One, there is nothing that can achieve what can be achieved in crypto gaming right now in existence. And only way to achieve that is crypto gaming. And the time that the customer wants it is now. For example, in cryptocurrency right now, you, the thing that people don't get, which I don't think is a problem, but it's speculative because we haven't even gone to the final customer yet. Bitcoin sorta has done this, but we are years maybe even a decade away from seeing people regularly use Ethereum in their day-to-day -day lives. We, we just are. And there's really no demand for it. No one's at the gas station being like, I wish I could pay for my gas with uh, Ethereum right now. If only we could. No one's really doing that, okay? I'm sorry. We have not even reached the customer actually using the final product yet. The final product of crypto gaming and the need for crypto gaming, it's been in demand and needed by the masses for years and it's being used and adopted by the final customer now. This isn't speculative, this is something that has to happen and there's no other way around it, there's no way to delay it. For example, the best example of this is, remember when World of Warcraft was blowing up and people wanted to buy gold and gold actually has value compared to an actual dollar? 
And then we actually seen people convert their dollars into digital gold and then using that to buy digital assets in a video game, which they cannot verify that they own, which they cannot exchange for actual money. And it all just goes into blizzards, code and data. Even despite that horrible, horrible setup, people are still doing it. We see esports being the most watched sports on planet Earth, but we can't gamble on them. We can't watch a Twitch stream and gamble between each other. We see digital skins and status symbols in video games being incredibly softer. People grinding hundreds of hours to get a purple dragon or something in World of Warcraft, for example. We see all the behaviors being done in the worst possible way, and it's all solved. We see all these behaviors, people demanding these behaviors, it being extremely important to them, and it, all the problems of it are being solved in the worst possible non-functional way. It doesn't function, it doesn't exist. Which is why at this point, you know, I'm not really into the, the future of finance and smart contracts. I'm just not, I don't find it terribly interesting. I am terribly, terribly, terribly interested in how people are gonna buy digital real estate and transfer weapons with each other and the games they're gonna play and how those games are gonna look, how people are going to build their online lives and earn money by playing games uh, and being workers in a digital realm. This is extremely interesting to me and it's going to happen. And this is why I'm going to transition the entire channel to this. I wanna lay out a situation right here where if you don't know what you're looking at, it makes it very obvious. You're gonna be like, okay, this is obviously something that's gonna happen. And by the way, follow me at ZSS Becker. There's been a lot of really good calls recently and some good trolling. You should, you should go there. You're gonna see things a lot earlier before I talk about them on this channel. But I'm basically just gonna cover crypto gaming, the things I'm looking at. And I have a really strong feeling we're gonna see the decoupling if we haven't already seen it in crypto gaming from uh, the rest of the market. For example, if you looked at Axie or Alluvium, they're busting their all-time highs when Bitcoin's at its lowest. That's not a decoupling, I don't know what is. I don't see why we have to be coupled with all these things we're not interested in as investors as well. And if you're a little bit confused by what I'm ranting and raving about right here, it's okay. I realize I ramble and sound like a crazy person on this channel, I get it. Let me lay out a situation right here so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. So first off, be sure to subscribe below and stay tuned for the other videos because I'm gonna talk about where I actually find projects that have 4X, 5X for me. I'm gonna be talking about the things you should follow, the, the places you should be looking at. I just wanna give you a general synopsis of uh, synopsis. <laughs> Becker's using big words on his channel now. All right, um, I want to give you a general synopsis, a per se vis a vis, of what I believe this is, it, not what I believe, what I know is going to happen. So there's going to be many different examples of that, but with DeFi and NFTs, it gives us this weird combination of everything all at once that we've been demanding in games forever. So let's just look at it this way. Let's say we got Logan Paul right here. Okay, and where's this one video game, and there's going to be many different other video games that are different than this. This isn't the, this isn't represent every game that's gonna happen in this space. But let's imagine we have a game like a Grand Theft Auto type game, and there's a penthouse in the city, okay? And this has to be bought with uh, theft dollars, which could also be a nickname for the US currency. Okay, but anyways, let's imagine we got Logan Paul right here. He wants to buy this penthouse in this game. Why does he want to buy this penthouse in this game? Because everybody's playing it, and whoever has the coolest penthouse in this giant city, which is like a Grand Theft Auto city, I'm not going to repeat that again, so envision it, is super cool. And what have we been seeing influencers and rich people doing forever now in digital assets? Trying to look super cool. What have been people have been doing since the end of time? Buying things that make them look super cool. But anyways, let's just imagine this penthouse has massive value, okay? And in order to buy this penthouse, you got to buy it in theft dollars. Okay, so we're just gonna call this theft dollars right here. So in order for Logan Paul to do this, he's going to need to convert his USDC in his wallet to theft dollars to then buy this penthouse, okay? So let's go over a few things that are just gonna happen just from this very basic transaction right here. All the things that are gonna be created. First off, um, the theft dollars already have value. This is the first currency that actually has like a real use case. Like you, you need it to buy things in this game. The end, okay? I realize you can do it with Ethereum and whatnot. Please don't spot check everything I say, guys. Reminder, I'm an idiot. So, look, we got these theft dollars right here. First off, we have a first working digital world currency. This is going to happen. This is why theft dollars in video games or, or whatever the currency in video games is gonna be so useful. But the cool thing about it too is theft dollars can be actually converted back into actual currency. So the person that sold this penthouse, he could have bought this really early on and he converts it to USDC. So we've actually, completely over interwoven real value with game value effortlessly through, let's say Uniswap or converting it over to it, okay? So now what's gonna happen right here? Well, this penthouse is actually an NFT. How do we verify 
that Logan Paul actually owns his penthouse. Well, we, we don't want it to be locked into uh, the the studio that built the game. We don't want it to be that. That's not how we want ownership to work. We want to work through a smart contract. So Logan pays this guy, smart contract fires, bam, the NFT goes into Logan Paul's wallet. Logan Paul is now the verified owner of this house. So we just saw the first real uh, complete economy in a video game. But where does what does what does does this open up for us? Well, we can have an entire subsector of people that do in-game actions or do task in games for people. We could have people that create cake in the game for your character to eat that gives you a stat boost to help you kill things better so you can make money faster or complete missions. What's going to happen right there? Well, let's imagine we just have people that now start working in the game full time. Why are they going to work full time? Because they can exchange the money that comes to them in the game or the, the points, whatever's happening. Let's imagine it's like World of Warcraft and they're on the woods killing boars all day and then making meat in the game. Okay. Well, they sell the meat for theft dollars. So anyways, by doing these tasks in game and playing the game, they are generating theft dollars. Well, theft dollars are ex exchangeable easily with UFCC. So they're technically making money. And why are they exchangeable with UFCC? Because Logan Paul wants to use USDC to buy theft dollars for the penthouse. So we just created an entire economy of what's going to fuel many people's full-time jobs. But then, all right, let's imagine we're also in the game and there's races, there's things going on. Well, what's going to happen in the game? Well, you're going to need to have theft dollars to bet on the races. Because gambling is what people love to do. They love to gamble. There's all sorts of other things people love to do with money. But it's an example right there. So again, gaming is going to intersect with gaming, gambling perfectly. Or maybe people want to watch something on stream. And they want to watch a race in this, this city. And they want to bet on it via stream. Well, what are they going to do? They're going to buy theft dollars to bet on it. And so suddenly we have a currency right here. We have NFTs. We have an entire way that people can work and change their lives. We have status. We have so many things interwoven to how humans are going to behave. And we're already seeing this in very bad games. I'm not gonna name the games that are popular right now. They're not good. They're not good. We're at the tippity tippity tip tip tip. We're gonna see so many actual things coming from main studios and really well-developed games that it is going to be the opportunity of a lifetime to buy into these things early or get into them early. And I'm going to be talking about that in future videos. I'm going to be talking about how I started a lot of video game projects, for example, Luvium, and made, I don't even know what the X on it is. I think it's at least 200X at this point. I'm not really sure. It's, a, it's done quite well. And there's all sorts of opportunities, like finding the NFTs. For example, when this game first comes out, if you can be first in and get the NFTs, you can buy this penthouse for, I don't know, $1,000 and then sell it to Logan Paul for $20 million. This, this stuff like this happens. It's, it's happening all over the place. But right now, the, the gaming environment is so immature that we're just seeing crap games and people throwing money at everything. The real stuff's about to merge. The places where people are going to make insane amounts of money is about to merge. And I'm extremely excited about it because I don't care if it's a bull market. I don't care if it's a bear market. That's irrelevant. This is coming for society. And that's why I really don't feel any need to focus on anything else in crypto. I just want to remind you of one thing. Let's imagine this is the entire, all of crypto, all the things you can invest in, okay? If you're trying to master this part of crypto and understand this part of crypto and this part of crypto and then this part of crypto and this part of crypto and then these parts of crypto and then you're not really interested in all these things, you're gonna be one spread out, confused, lost person. And you really aren't going to make that life-changing money or any huge, massive, crazy gains without an understanding of what you're doing bar none. And without understanding what you're doing, you're probably not going to pick that once in a lifetime investment. You're not going to pick that once in a lifetime technology is popping up or even make good calls consistently in these spaces. Let's imagine this is DeFi right here. This is like Oracle's. This is the Cardano ecosystem. And you got like maybe, I don't even know what the hell is going on over here. We got NFTs. We got all sorts of things going on. You're trying to do all of them at once, like a, like a stuck pig uh, shitting all over the, the place, throwing poop at the walls. All right. What I much rather do is just look at one space that I know is 100% the future and I understand and I get and I really enjoy and just say, I'm gonna master this nugget right here. And I can just sit here like the eye of Mordor in the center of it, just looking around for what I think is good. And if I understand it very, very well and I just focus on this one space, my eye of Mordor is going to pick the thing that's gonna 100, the 200X. And at least my chances of doing it are far better than being like, ah, 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 buy eight on Bitcoin. It's, it's great, ah, buy this thing now and this. Ah, that, that's most people's investment strategy. It's, it's hard, you can't, it's, I, don't, I don't know how to make that work. And while it is all very, very exciting, 
as a person that's developed games, as a person that understands indie game marketing, as a person that understands how software companies work and teams go together, person that understands how customers interact with products, this is where it's at. So, and it also gives me so other places to mix all my passions together, which is crypto, but also streaming, playing video games. We can bring it all together on one channel and it's just too much fun not to do. And then on top of that, I love talking to video game founders and developers and the teams behind them and the studios and the art behind it. It's just too cool. It's, it's just too cool not to do. So wrapping it all up, guys, if you want to see the things I'm looking at way earlier than on YouTube, follow me at ZSS Becker and then turn on the notification bell because look, there's been a few projects I've already talked about. And if you got into them, when I just subtly mention them, I'm never going to pump something on Twitter. I subtly mention them in the comments or like certain things, get into them you would have done really well. That being said, I don't have anything else to say in this video. I'll catch you next time.